Testing. Think make it not good to go. Okay, so <clears throat> what are we doing? We're going to be covering our D twenty three progress. Uh, we'll also do battle channel. Then we will do some video games. Uh, we might do a little bit of progress on Battle Channel, but it's probably going to be mostly uh, um, games. But it won't be too long, because I do have a d, d game this evening, which is going to be fun. So, uh, let's go over first let's go in order so we're going to cover first d23 for dungeon 23 so for those who do not know uh the one of the writers of mothership uh put our challenge just a thing people can do called 23 dungeon 23 and the progress is that basically for every day of the year you will design a room in a dungeon and each month will be a floor. Um, I fell behind quite badly. I only really picked this up in March, which is why uh, the first floor has a map. And we basically have a general summary of what each room is. Uh, for me to go back into uh, designing uh, more specific elements. Why is this? Well, because my hope is that this will be a dungeon that we can run using the uh, TTRPG rules we've been writing in the other stuff. Um, kind of, and it will give me a place to test elements in a usable setting. Um, so my intent is that it will not be a traditional mega dungeon because the original design brief is it's a mega dungeon every floor has it, it operates like a normal mega dungeon what i want to do is play and see if you can develop roguelike dungeon rules for a set for a for a game so the intent would be um, that potentially instead of a mega dungeon where you have all of the rooms you can explore, what I might, what my current intent is, that every time you run it from the list of rooms available, you will generate a floor, so it will be different each time, but the floor remembers as it were so if you encountered an npc and you help them they will remember for the next time you're running through and uh, yes that's going to be interesting um i have some funky things i want to do with weapons with it um but yeah so that's the current intent but uh, the key thing for D23 is that you do a design. So, floor number one is the cathedral. So you have your entry hall going into the main hall, dotted with shrines to different deities. Uh, this area is the tomb of an ancient legendary blade. You then have uh, one point 
right yeah so over this end is a chapel uh pews down here which then lead to a court and a shrine to a saint and uh, this is the boss fight for the floor so they can go straight to the boss fight if they really want to or they can explore the rest of the floor you've got kind of a gardens area this section belongs to an order of knights associated with the faith this is their individual chapel barracks and armory down here is like the library uh kitchens and canteen area basically this is this is the um these are the duties because this is it, this is designed off a monastery this is kind of what you would generally see in a monastery is other things bookmakers um potentially some brewery records treasury etc here is the preparation of the dead and the graveyard and the mausoleum so yeah th this is the cathedral uh this section should probably i if i were to go in for proper software i would probably increase the size of this little bit quite more but uh th this is a very rough guide for my initial design uh then we have technically a 13th floor which um, i just added because it gives the dungeon its thing uh, which will be your hub it will be the social space and then your floor 12 which is the theme of experiment so as i said it's a bit of a roguelike is the aim so i've kind of laid out the floors so many are combat so many are social encounters etc etc uh, you have living spells uh, each time you encounter the room it might be a different type of living spell some of them will of course be combat based some of them might be more of a puzzle to deal with some of them potentially you could talk to if you have a way of doing it uh chimeric mutants because the flame of the floor is the experiment it's basically what if a wizard what arcane shenanigans can wizards doing their weird experiments come up with so you know like your your classic thing whenever you hear ttrpg and wizard experiments is you go oh owl bears so it's stuff like that it's it's x plus y thing wild elementals uh more chimeric creatures maybe some constructs uh a cursed creature kind of going off the theme of a nothic probably not exactly anothic but we're gonna see it's gonna be like some cursed thing maybe it is the wizard that's been cursed uh some weird summonings um we've got to have a combo where there's at least one room option where you could be fighting multiple of these things to kind of move and develop what you've learned uh some rooms to give some history of the location a merchant shop uh, which is just going to be a very small psychic dragon that travels around and with a bag of holding and uh it, it it's common amongst all the floors is basically if you get this room it's a place where you can stop you can rest you can purchase goods from the pseudo dragon uh, spend the rewards that you have found every level has a set of wards that are holding something in place that i want to keep a little bit quiet but basically how each floor interacts with the wards is different and if the players mess around sometimes the players will have to mess around sometimes if they don't mess around um, the ward may break and if it breaks if they have a re if the dungeon resets because there's a party wipe uh the ward remains broken uh treasure room because obviously you need to give them treasure um the not quite finished magic item fabrications they might have some um, 
dodgy magic items that they uh, could use. Po room full of potions, room full of mimics, a room to rest. Uh, a menagerie of magical animals that could be a fight or could be a source of companions. Maybe you might find a familiar there. Maybe you might find something else. Um, maybe it's a companion that will follow you into battle. Uh, then we've got some puzzles based on spells, and spell schools, and runes. Um, maybe some runes, ex runes explaining the previous monsters came to be. Uh, giving the players a chance to just learn and gain information, which then allows them to see what's happening. Um, then we wanted some social encounters, so I've got a room where you may encounter a polymorphed apprentice of the wizard. Um, and then you have a demi-lich of an apprentice who likes to challenge strangers to small games in exchange for riches. An ancient lich librarian who spends their time wandering a library. Um, a place where players can maybe get some uh, modifications to upgrade their bodies. Um, or a living spell that maybe uh, wants to help the players. And then at the end of every floor is a boss room. Um, so for the experiments it's the perfect being it is um the way i imagine it is like there's a fight in ff14 where you're fighting in a laboratory a research facility and i think it's just like oh yeah here's a boss fight and it can change its form and it's meant to be the best fighter ever and at the end when you defeat it goes this thing is perfect it's meant we will begin mass production and it's like okay so it's every time you re-encounter this boss, it changes to overcome its previous weakness, but it may then in turn gain a new weakness. Um, then floor, the next floor, which was February's floor, uh, so what was that? That was January, February was the experiments, March was the wastes, the waste is basically it's a the theme of the floor was waste management it is where the broken things from the experiment floor are sent up and it is where the broken machines from the floor above are sent down so you know you got your rust monsters your oozes broken robots um some of the automated disposal systems may try to attack you. One of the key themes of that floor was it's got its own story, but it is also preparing the party for the floor above. It is giving them hints of what is above them. And I think that's the key thing is you kind of... You... The, the key way I look at it is kind of um, you each floor has its own theme, its own story, its own history that adds to the history of the location because it is kind of the bottom floor came first and then it, it's that bit where history over time becomes buried. So the oldest thing, the first thing is at the very bottom and the newest thing, which is the cathedral, is at the top. So everything in between is telling, and in, as the players progress through the floors, they are seeing a passage of time through the location. And that's what the theme of each floor is. Each floor was built by someone who observed the floors below and went, well, I'm going to build on top of this, but we're going to build this. So the, this floor is the waste. It is, it probably was not intended to come alone it probably was built the same time the floor above was but it was also used as like uh well it doesn't matter if anything goes down because all it'll go down into is the experiments and then the wizards um 
crazy stuff will destroy them. Um, but yes, so you've got your rust monsters, you might have some reanimated corpses or machines from ex uh, from the failed experiments below. Um, you may have some escaped experiments from below, you'll have broken things from the floor above. Um, an uncomfortable merchant shop, because probably the dragon is going to be happy to be in basically the world's largest um, waste disposal system. Uh, there are the wards, you have some of the creatures living there, you have some recycling. Um, what I'm probably going to do is actually... you got a couple of settlements there, which I think would be cool. Basically, it'd be nice. Uh, so basically, each floor is a percentage of each floor is combat, a percentage of each floor is exploration, a percentage of each floor is social engagements or traps. But what I really hope is that with the settlements, is that they're places where A, the party can rest, they can give natural stopping points. But the other neat thing, is they give a place that the players can stop they can potentially get information they could potentially make social contacts and importantly they can trade resources for other parts which is neat um and you know what I will probably do is make, I might make at the end of this, depending on how I feel about it, I might make a master map that is, if you don't want to go the roguelike method, you can, here's a, here's a master map of the mega dungeon. Um, I think the preferred method will be... Uh, running as a roguelike that that'd be my preferred method but uh, i'll probably include a way of using a mega dungeon and just laying everything out will mean i have to learn to draw maps better um i have some map editing tools i just need to learn how to use the damn things right uh what else do we have we have With some settlements, we have constructs crap heap, uh, which is very much an encounter that's um, meant to give clues about the floor above. You know, you're seeing robots falling from above. Uh, there, it's just a joke room I made. Uh, a room because potatoes are generally quite a hardy plant to go. Just a potato room. There are lots of potatoes. Um, due to the nature of where they're being grown. Uh, they might have some secondary effects, but there is room of potatoes that the people here are growing just to try and, like, survive, have food. Um, yeah, broken items. There might be some decent items that players can find if they're lucky in picking through trash heaps. Uh, another mimic room. Uh, trash compactor trap, collapsing floor into an acid pit, jumping puzzles, a sphere of annihilation, which is basically just being used as a disposal mechanism. Um, a silly room that's just a room with an overfilled bag of holding that the players have to... Uh, Try and work out how to uh, use and solve the problem. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, broken robot that um, 
if the players bring them parts, might uh, become a bit of an ally. Uh, a salvager that wants body parts to... Uh, uh, for giving supplies the farmer who grows the potatoes who just chills out if the players go to him maybe they'll get a, a meal that gives them a short rest without having to take a short rest um, who's friend and then again you've got the boss monster you've got the scrap beast um, you know it it's one of those bosses where the better the players do, the more through the dungeon they go, the bigger it is the next time they meet it. But if they defeat it, um, of course it'll get smaller again and reset its grown progress. Uh, and then we got to April. Uh, so that was March. Now we're on to April, which is floor 10, the machines. Uh, this one is basically, it is a floor that is effectively a... It's not quite a city, it's just the thing is uh, robot production, robot making. So uh, for the next week, uh, this week, um, is going to be combat encounters we need to design. Um, and then next week, and then the week after is expiration. Uh, there are some rooms that are consistent between floors, which is why they're Rebuilt. Um, so it's going to be this coming week is combat. The next two weeks are exploration, going into traps and puzzles, and then the final week will be social encounters and the what the boss of the floor will be. Then for May, the theme is science and the future. June is the past. July is the city, August is the battle, September is the holy and the unholy, October is the horrors, November is the survivors, and December is death, or death versus another theme. Um, and then the dungeon will be completed. So that is our D23. Uh, so what I will quickly ask is if anyone has any questions... Uh, feel free to ask now. If you do not have questions, we will uh, progress. Not having questions is entirely fine, by the way. It is a, a fairly bare-bones project at the moment. Um, I mean, it might not be um, finished in time for the end of December. I would hope it will be, but... Um... Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to jump to Battle Channel. So what have we done since last we met? Not much. Uh, obviously, last time we met, we finished Wizard, so Battle Channel. So we have finished the initial bit for every class, which is the initial questions to get you um, thinking ideas of how to make your Battle Channeler. Uh, we have the table... As you can see, it's a lot. It is a, a very simple table. It is your level. You get class features and how many channels you can do a long rest, which eventually becomes unlimited. Um, you get D twelve plus your endurance. You get light armor, medium armor, shield, simple martial weapons. Um, you get quite a few skills to choose between. Um. change a couple of those skills around i'll have a think about it um things we haven't done yet we haven't got the unique aspects i don't know what to do for mark of fate and inspired action 
we've got the basics of channel emotion so the battle channeler is based off the barbarian so instead of raging you channel emotions and you have a selection of emotions to choose between which is joy hope peace courage love grief despair rage fear envy half of them are associated with the dream half of them are associated with the nightmare so when you pick your emotion you gain an additional class tag emotion uh, sorry dream or nightmare channel based on the emotion you pick um what this means is you might have an easy you um if we were to design feats associated with the realm of dreams it would probably have as one of its prerequisites it'd be like dream touch template or dream slash nightmare channel um so effectively instead of taking a ancestry option associated with the dream you could just take battle channeler and have that act as your association with the dream um, you can channel emotion while doing it you have advantage on trait tests with the exception of attack rolls that use the trait associated with your emotion so the big thing about battle channeler is i want them to be usable in and out of combat and each emotion is tied with one of these six character traits so what it means is if you pick an emotion that's associated with say knowledge you might actually be really good at recalling knowledge about things researching studying when channeling your emotion if you took a combat one one that buffs your physique or your agility you may be really good at combat um, if you take one that's determination you might be good at talking to people stuff like that so basically how channeling your emotion has an out of combat use because it can give you for that period of channeling advantage on trait tests with that trait when you make a melee weapon attack using physique you gain a bonus equal to your damage equal to your skill bonus if you're able to cast spells or psionic powers you cannot concentrate on them so we will let you cast magic we won't let you concentrate on magic which I think, I think when you're doing the full breadth and breadth of emotions, it makes more sense to let that be the way it interacts. Um, also, the final point is your mood and attitude are subsumed by the emotion. You can quieten the emotion while channeling its power, but that requires you to make a determination roll. And if you fail, the emotion gets complete control. And you should discuss with the game guide in the table how best to roleplay this. So effectively, it's like, if you're raging, you should roleplay someone who is angry. If your emotion is envy, you should roleplay that. If it's hope, you should roleplay that. It will change how you behave. And then if you try to quieten it because now is not a good time for that emotion then at that point you have a risk of making it worse but you could also make it better um you don't get the benefits of channeling while wearing heavy armor uh it lasts for the encounter or scene it ends early if you are knocked unconscious or your turn ends and you haven't attacked or taken damage or made a trait test using the appropriate check so if you are not unconscious and the encounter is still ongoing if you are one that has knowledge and you're just making knowledge roles you're just constantly researching then um, you can keep this going Um, I just need to think a second about that. Um, Do 
think I think that's the best way to do it is during narrative time because there isn't a six second there there isn't a constant turn thing it doesn't really make sense um Uh, and so you can use it a uh, number of times equal to uh, what's on the table per long rest. So then each emotion has an associated trait and an additional benefit for channeling on top of these four effects here. So like courage is physique, despair is determination, etc, etc, etc. What my current thought is, is they will each interact with the mark condition. I'm not going to do four E's. Every class is a tank, a healer, a controller, or a damage dealer. But what I am going to do is classes... I'm still going to look somewhat at it as a DPS uh, healer tank kind of thing. And what I'm looking at it as is if someone could be in a class where tanking is part of the goal. So paladin, barbarian, fighter. If we're looking at 5e they each will gain a unique use of the mark condition. Um, not every class gets unique use of the mark condition. For example, wizard doesn't. It might be that every martial class gets unique use of the mark condition. Uh, that might be how it just ends up being, is that martial gets use of mark. A uh, tank, the, the tank, as it were, in quotation marks, gets one themed around defense about um, focusing attacks on them whereas your dps you know your rangers your rogues that kind of thing might get marks more themed around bonus damage in some way um because the big one i think is I'm going to take Hunter's Mark out of spells and move that into uh, the Mark Condition. And it will probably be... Because my current thought is Paladins and Rangers will get the Cleric and Druid respectively spell lists. The same way, uh, Lawmaster will get Wizard and um, oh, uh, the Slayer will get the Pact Bound uh, spell list. Like they, they are just getting the spell list of the class. They are getting the archetypal spell list. Um, what we will probably do is have it where what would have been. Uh, in D and D, a ranger spell or a paladin spell will instead be looked at as okay. Let's make this an ability unique to the class. Uh, that's my current thought process: is make it an ability that just becomes part of the class feature. Um, so, if you don't want to give smite spells to clerics, what we instead do is we go, okay, smite spells are just the smite ability for paladin. You get to Flavia smite. Um, Hunter's Mark is not a spell for druid. It's part of the ranger package. Um, a Middle East Slayer and Lawmaster don't exist in 5e. So they can't, I, I can't go, oh yeah, just make their custom spells part of the class feature. It's like, well, yeah. um, that's my current thought process.
anyway. So, um, so what I'm probably going to do is each of the emotions for Battle Channel will be tied to the mark condition and give them a slightly different thing, because while I'm sat there going, you know, paladin and barbarian and fighter of the tank, they can also be just a DPS. Like, sometimes you're just a barbarian who hit things real good. You're not necessarily taking the hits. It's nice when it happens, but you don't have to take the hits. Sometimes your thing is just you're dealing a lot of damage. So the way we might then look at it is that the battle channeler, some of the emotions, are less about protecting others and more about harming others. Uh, which I think would be an interesting thing to play with. So it basically turns into... Uh, an interesting uh, set. So that's that. Uh, Specialised Defence is the other bit. You'll get a level one. And it is in the same way as a wizard got... Sorry, Arcanist got to choose between Arcane Recovery and something specific for a spell school. You get either Armoured Defence or Unarmoured Defence. Unarmoured Defence is the same way the Barbarian works now. You, you just... If you're not wearing any armour... You can use a shield, but as long as you're not wearing any armor, you get a new AC calculation. Uh, what armored defense is, you can, you are trained in the use of heavy armor. You can use channel emotions when wearing heavy armor, but you cannot use channel emotions in light armor. The reason I chose light armor was I still wanted a restriction. I didn't want to go no armor because I, uh, the, the way I'm thinking is if you go heavy armor, you might not be able to afford heavy armor at the start of the game. So we'll let you keep medium armor as a channel. So you can channel in medium, you can channel in heavy. Um, and I didn't want it where you cannot channel in no armor. Because if I let you channel in, if I prevent you from channeling in no armor, it means things like what happens when you get caught uh, in the middle of the night during a long rest and you're ambushed. Suddenly you took armor defense, you're being handicapped. So by taking light armor, you're still encouraged to wear armor because obviously you've not got the alternate hit calculation of unarmored defense. You're still going to want to wear armor of some kind, but it means you're still useful in most combat situations. Um, you also cannot gain the benefit of using a shield while channeling with armor defense. So, you know, you're not... There is still some distinguishing between you and a paladin. Uh, fighting style, so you get a fighting style feat... Um, Uh, we have Emotional Fighter, which is Battle Channeler only. We have Great Weapon Fighter, Reactive Fighter, Thrown Weapon Fighter, Two Weapon Fighter, Unarmed Fighter. And then you have Special... And then um, if you chose Unarmored Defense, you get Duelist. If you picked Armored Defense, you get Defensive Fighter. Which I can go into in a bit. Uh, danger Sense we are going to be replacing. I want it to be something useful outside of combat. Uh, I'm just not sure what at the moment. I might make it that it's a second option you can pick. You can pick Danger Sense or something else. So you have Danger Sense for if you think you're going to do a lot of dungeon crawling. But you might pick something else if you're not doing a lot of dungeon crawling. Uh, you get your Battle Channeler at level 3. You get your path at level 3, you get B, you get extra attack. Um, then you get a 5th level adept channeler, so this is you get an additional benefit. Uh, so you get some extra benefits for channeling. When you channel emotions, you immediately get to move half your walking speed towards someone. And... 
there are two additional effects to channel emotions. So, while you're channeling emotions, you can use the trait associated with your emotion instead of physique for determining the attack roll and damage roll. Using this trait with the melee weapon allows you to gain the skill bonus damage effect. So basically, when you start, you have to use physique weapon. Part way through, you'll be able to use the trait associated with your emotion. Um, you gain an additional benefit based on the emotion while under the desperation condition. So this is when you're under a quarter of your hit points, you get an additional effect. You get to add, uh, increase the tier of a channelless path by one, pick a new one. The other thing is, whenever you get an expanded channelless path, you get an additional fighting style feat that you could pick from above. Um, it's probably going to be common for battle channeler and fighter that those two get to pick additional fighting styles whenever they would get a subclass. Um, just because they do not have access to spell casting, it's kind of an extra thing they can get as they level, um, as they practice more in the arts of fighting. It also then frees up their feet options for other choices. <laughs> that, that, that was partly the other thing. Uh, lightning reflexes is at 7th level you have advantage on initiative rolls and your walking speed increases by 2 meters if you're not wearing heavy armor unless you took the arms defense option specialized defense at which point you ignore that restriction uh, if you were surprised at the beginning of combat and aren't incapacitated you can ignore the condition uh, but only if you take your channel emotions action before doing anything else that turn. You know, you're just ready to turn on a moment's notice. Ninth level, you get two features. You get summon emotion. Um, if you've played FF14, you entirely know what that's based off. Um, and then vent emotion is you... Vent emotion is the modification of brutal critical um in that is effectively what brutal critical was but it's not like it's brutal critical three times it's just here you go it's the ability when you do extra damage or a critical hit you can roll a number of additional weapon damage dice equal to half your skill bonus rounded up because that's what brutal critical was um Never expanded path, never fighting style. Because the other thing is, you're only getting four fighting styles. No way. One, two. Yeah, you only get four fighting styles out of it, so you don't get all the fighting style feats. Uh, Vessel of Emotion is a modification of the earlier Barbarian feature of the same level, which is basically... You don't die outright while channeling emotions. You make a constitution saving throw, in this case an endurance stamina test. If you succeed, you drop to 1 HP instead of dropping to 0. Every time you use this after the first, the, in, the, the result has to increase by 3. And then when you complete a long rest, it resets to a target number of 10. Uh, you also require two more degrees of the wounded condition than normal to die. This just means you're you're in the fight for longer. Um, you're in the fight for longer. You're harder to kill. Twelfth, you get feats. Thirteenth, you get um, another ability based off your emotion. Uh, this is replacing one of the brutal criticals. So one of the things I'm considering trying to do is it's a bit like um, Dark Knight's Blackest Night, but it's based off your emotion. So I've got to work out how to do that. Strength and channel is basically your adapt channeler instead of going off on the desperation condition goes off on bloodied. So instead of at 25% your HP, it's at 50%. Um, 
and while you're channeling emotions, you get to you get an extra um, extra attack. You get to attack three times instead of two. Um, still not as much as a you're you're still not going to be doing as much in a turn as a fighter is, and it still is reliant on you channeling emotion. Because it's a thing, if you do not channel emotion, nearly half of the class's features aren't involved. So you've got to consider that resource at all times. Uh, uh, then you've got another expanded channeler's path, persistent channeling. So you only lose it now if you fall unconscious or you choose to end it. It doesn't even have the um, uh, scene encounter requirement anymore. 17th level, I'm not sure what we're going to do yet. Uh, 18th level is you get to pick two traits between physique, endurance or your trait tied to your emotion as long as it is not one of the two prior traits because i realized if i didn't include that little caveat someone could pick physique twice or endurance twice if depending on their emotion whatever trait you choose increases the value of the trait by two to a maximum of seven And then 20 of level is going to be something different. Because originally this is your 20 of level ability. I was like, I want to do something different. So warp body is now what you get to 18th level. And you get something else at 20th. Because also at twen uh, uh, 20th level, you have got to increase an ability by two. Or two abilities by one to a maximum of seven. And you got to be legendary in a single trait. So that gets to stay the same. Because we put the other trait increased to 18th level. And a 20th level is going to be something about becoming an embodiment of your emotion. <coughs> I think it will be... My current thought process is... Pardon me, I'm going to sneeze. No? No? Okay, no, no, not going to sneeze again. Okay, so um, 20th level will be probably um, you get to become an avatar of that emotion. You get to embody it to its fullest. And importantly, uh, you'll probably take on traits tied to the nightmare or the dream is how that might play out um so as you can see there's still a lot to do we've still got dream champion we've got to work out what to do with brutal crit with this 8 17th level we've got to fill in how emotion plays against this defensive ability we've got to do the how your summoned emotion works um We've got to work out what do you get at desperation based on your emotion. And we've got to work out what does each emotion give your marked condition. And then what's your mark of fate and um, inspired action do. So there's still a lot of stuff to do. Oh, we've also got to work, rework danger sense. So there's still a lot of work to do. But I'm quite happy with where we've got it to. Because the key thing is the check it's minor changes but some of those changes i think have a big impact on what your class gets to do outside of combat um i think which i think is neat i think it's very nice that you get some flexibility in what your class does it's not just a combat class now it has some utility because even just the fact going okay i'm mv i have advantage on skill checks to do with intuition great yeah, that 
it's things like survival, um, empathy, um, perception, you know, these are some useful skills when you're out in the wild. And you could also have fear, at which point you have advantage on general knowledge, you have advantage on medicine, you, you have advantage on things there that are useful. So there is utility in the class. I don't think it is quite as one note. I would like to rage. Bam. I would like to rage. Bam. Like, you could totally do that. You can go rage. Your chosen trait is physique. So you can ignore all the other trait mechanics and shenanigans. It's just, I am physique. I focus on endurance. I take on armored defense. Uh... Actually, to be fair, if you just go down that route, it's very easy to just be a regular barbarian. Um, you have some differences. You'll get your danger sense. As, well, you can pick danger sense an option. You'll get some fighting styles. Um, obviously, you'll get a bonus. Doubt. You can ignore this ability, but you'll get a desperation thing. Lightning reflexes and summon emotion. Uh, sorry, lightning reflexes, vent emotion, vessel of emotion. A lot of these are the same if you play with like a rage build. So, yeah, like you still get to be a barbarian. Um, subclasses. So, obviously, as always, I'm designing it that you could, because it is an adaptation of the barbarian, you can use any barbarian path. Obviously, whenever the path mentions the word rage, you just have to change it to channel emotion. Um, I don't think many of their subclasses actually refer back to core class features either, which makes it so much easier to do things. So uh, the subclass are going to be Path the Dreamers, which is focused on the dream emotions. Not quite sure what to do there yet. Path of Duality, whose key trait is going to be you get to have two emotions simultaneously. You have to pick a dream and a nightmare emotion. Um, I don't think I will make it that you have to pick the same trait. I think it just has to be one dream, one nightmare. Uh, and there could be some cool stuff there. Um, Path of the Martyr is one we have written up. So Path the Martyr um, has the rule of, unless the uh, GG says otherwise, um, you can't take armor defense. The entire point is that you wear no armor, you wear no shields. Your entire thing is to try and die by killing big things. So their main class feature is when you go down, you get to make an attack against someone. Um... Trollbane is you get to have bonuses against large and larger targets uh, when your melee attacks. Yeah, if you miss, you can use reaction to attack again. Oh, if they miss you, you can use reaction to attack them. Uh, Giant's Bane is you. Uh, if you're fighting a target that is huge or larger, or fighting against a significant threat determined by your game guide, um, and the target is missing hit points, uh, your attacks are considered magical for overcoming resistances. And once per turn on a successful hit, you can deal an extra 1d12 force damage to the target. Um, and your death blob gets modified to have this bonus. Dragon's Bane is the third tier, which is... Uh, you are immune to the frightened condition. In addition, while under the effects of channeling emotion, if the individual fighting a significant threat or gargantuan or bigger, when you score a critical hit, all of the damage dice three times instead of twice. Uh... This effect can only be applied once per turn, with the exception of via death blow. Basically, your crits are insane. I might need to actually alter that.
what I might do, because I think is what I was intending by the wording, is because your critic, your your vent emotion is if you get critical, your weapon die get to be rolled to a maximum of three times. What I might do is um, this ability affects all the die except for the weapons damage die. Or you get plus one roll of a weapons damage die and all the other die rolled three times. Because um, I think that was the intent was critical you roll twice, this you roll three times. But brutal critical already let you roll extra die. Uh, already let you roll extra die. Mm. What I would, so I let you roll three times. If I say this excludes the extra die from brutal critical, I think that makes sense. Because basically what it's doing is a normal critical is you roll all the die, all of the dice that you roll, you roll twice. This case, it's you roll it three times. And then brutal critical is you get some extra rolls of the weapon damage die. What I would probably have to do is maybe exclude Brutal Critical? I don't know. I'll have to have a think about it. Uh, and then Basque Bane, which is the final one, is... Um, um, you have advantage on trade checks to avoid the effects of spells and psionic powers. While you're channeling emotion, if the individual you're fighting is a significant threat or titanic or larger, your attacks against the creature ignore all resistances and treat immunities as if they were resistances. On a critical hit, if you successfully deal damage to the creature at the start of your next turn, they have disadvantage on all trait tests, bar attack rolls. This can only be applied once per turn. Uh, then you have Path of Nightmare, which is like Path of Dreams, for a nightmare emotion, and then you have Path of the Soul Channeler, which is uh, if Fighter gets to have a subclass that's all about being tied to Wizard, uh, it's effectively the this gets a subclass tied to being um, a sorcerer. So you get show access to the Soul Shaper spell list. You cast like a soul shaper, except you don't get to do rituals. Uh, while under the effects of channel emotion. When you cast a spell learned from the battle channeler until the end of your turn, your extra damage from channel emotion is applied to the spell damage instead of weapon damage. Uh, you could choose for this duration to replace resistances gained from channeling your chosen emotion with any single damage type dealt by the spell cast that turn. Did actually I keep resistances? Channeling emotions. You have advantage, you get more damage, you can cast spells. Barbarian class. Class features. Does rage normally give you resistance? Have I entirely... Oh, sugar. Mm, okay, I will have to come back to you. Can I say, but whoops. Um, yeah, because the thing with the spell casting is you can, when you cast a spell, you can replace a resistance gained by channeling your emotion with any damage type the spell cast that turn. 
So basically, if you cast Firebolt, for the duration of the turn, you can choose to not be resistant to piercing damage, but be resistant to fire damage. And you can cast and concentrate on concentration spells, one of the effects of channel emotion. Uh, but if you concentrate, you lose all your resistances granted by channel emotion. Until the concentration is ended. Uh, and it only affects resistances granted while channeling emotions. It doesn't affect ancestry or magic item resistances. So then you get a set number of cantrips known and a set number of spell slots known. And then at first level you pick, because you're soul bound, what your soul is tied to. Either a demi eternal, a dragon, a eldritch horror, a masked evil, or it's an ancient power like those of royal blood or fate, or it's basically your, your, someone special. Um, and so at first level it just gives you two spells a cantrip and a first level spell to add to your spell list then you have soul aspect which is at second tier you get an extra benefit based off which one you chose at level at the first tier so for demi eternal while channeling emotion you can get 2d4 added to a trait test once per short or long rest, uh, for dragons, you get resistance. Uh, you choose the damage type when you gain the feature, and whenever you're channeling emotion, you gain resistance to the chosen damage type. And your hit target increases by two. I'm not sure if, if you fail a trait test was meant to be there. And the key thing there is, as it says, when you have the resistance, you have the hit target bonus. The reason for that is because the early effect lets you go, I'm going to swap my resistance out. If you swap out the dragon resistance, you lose the hit target bonus. Uh, drowned let you uh, increase your reach and become immune to disease. And while on the effects of the channel emotion, you have advantage on trait tests to resist the effects of abilities that would give the poisoned or paralyzed conditions and effects that would reduce your trait values. Uh, Mast evil is... Uh, you effectively get enlarge, reduce, and grow some natural weapons. Um, but you don't get any of your resistances and cannot concentrate on spells. Oh no, sorry, you get resistance to fire damage, which cannot be lost when concentrating on spells. Um, and then Royal is, if you fail a trait test, you use your reaction to get a plus two bonus. Uh, and then you can't cast spells other than cantrips, and your next weapon attack is made a disadvantage uh, for a turn. Then you have mutated channeling, which for most of them is you get wings. Except for drowned, which is if you're hit by slashing or piercing damage, you can shoot blood at an opponent, which hurts them. Or Royal, which gives you a reaction. reaction. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, Royal is you can use reaction if you hit by an attack to potentially make it uh, not hit you. But it could also make it worse, because uh, it could make them a critical hit theoretically um there was something i wanted to do
And then your final thing, which is um, for Demi Eternal, uh, if you get a critical hit and you're in desperation, you can use a 1 AP to regain hit points equal to um, a quarter of your hit point maximum. Basically, it can get you from desperation to bloodied, um, in theory. Uh, and you get the Heaven Touch template. Draconic is... Um, you can polymorph yourself into a young dragon whose damage type is the same as your resistance, but you only get the elemental breath weapon, you don't get any extra breath weapons, and you get the Dragonborn Ancestry um, Drowned is you get the outside touched template and you can basically f use your blood to hurt people a whole lot more and curse them Mast Evil is you get the Mass Touch template and you basically um, charge an opponent and cover them in fire. And then Royal Blood is you get the Fate Touch template and if you hit by a critical hit you can use your reaction to make a trait test to uh, make it that the crit is no longer the hit is no longer critical. Um, and it's hard, and uh, the first time you use the thing to resist death, it doesn't increase by five. So, this one's quite fun. It's quite silly. Um, it's probably one that will need some tuning. But it's fun, it's silly. Um, and yeah, so that's Battle Channel. We have three subclasses to write. We have basically everything that features the word emotions to write up. And we have to do... Um, and we have some new abilities. And I have to rework Danger Sense. So yeah, we've got quite a way to go. I'm quite happy with our progress though. Like, these last few weeks have been very busy. I haven't really been able to focus on doing games design. Um, the big problem has just been it's end of financial year, so <laughs> IRL work has been super busy. Uh, the one nice thing is I no longer have to work every other Saturday. So that should mean um, streams either happen a bit earlier in the day. They, they, they won't just be 3 p.m. all the time. Uh, also, hopefully it means I have more energy in the week to get more games design done. So, yeah. So we can either uh, move straight to video games. I will leave it to you, Chuck, because we've got a few hours till I need to finish um what I'm tempted to do is what time is it it is two o'clock now if it is all right with you chat feel free to comment your feelings on this I'm tempted to go three o'clock we will go on to video games because that will give us about two three hours of harvest stellar um I will and I will just do some games design till about half two, three o'clock. Um, or we might go till half two, take a five, ten minute break. I then can quickly pop to the restroom and stuff and just get everything set up and then we'll do some harvest stuff. So let's have a look. Let's jump to let's let let's sit down let's think about it. let's do some well let's quickly look and just see see if i could just think a minute about a mark of fate and an inspired action so an inspired action has to be you roll the natural 20. um now you get an additional action on your next turn that you can take, usually for one AP. Most actions take two. 
So you have one action for one AP. That is really cool. And they already have access to... Give me a second. Just got to get past character generation. I do wish this thing would let you um, collapse menus. Uh, past the combat. Past the exploration. Past the social. Here you go, inspired action. So everyone can reduce the severity of a harmful concept. Uh, find an item, perform the aid action, get a bonus to socialize and get to press the point, prior preparation, surprise discovery, everyone gets a follow through, everyone gets shared focus. Hmm. Mm. So... Roll the natural 20 on your turn. You now get a second turn. What if... We let you make a single attack. Because you could still then take the attack action. For your two AP, you've got your one AP left. What if we let you make an, a single weapon attack for your inspired action that can critical on a 18, 19, or 20? It cannot generate another inspired action. Unless you roll a nat 20, but it can gain the benefit of a critical hit on an 18, 19, or 20. It's basically you get a free bonus attack on your next turn. That would be potentially cool. But is that too much? This class is one that likes getting criticals. So that would work in its favour. This is definitely a class that likes to hunt its criticals. Yeah, I could see that working.
fires event is what we call it. I do not want to actually know how many pages of this damn document there are. <laughs> Inspired event. Yeah, so you cannot get an inspired event, but for one AP you get to make an attack. We'll make it two. Uh, we'll make it that um, you get to make two strikes for one AP. Um, actually. Hmm. Yeah, so Emotional Strike gives you a bunch of attacks based on your skill bonus, so it does scale. They have a crit on 18, 19, or 20, but they cannot produce inspired events. That would mean skill bonus of plus one, it'll be one. Skill bonus of plus two, it'll be one. A skill bonus of plus three, it'll be one. But a skill bonus of plus four? I do say rounded up. So yeah. Up until skill bonus of plus three, you get my one attack. Skill bonus of plus four and above, you get to make two attacks. Yeah, that, that I think seems reasonable. Um, and the mark of fate. How do we want what? In what way?
keep, we'll keep that for now. We might change it, but because um, I was tempted just to go, actually, you just make it the same as your weapon attacks. But I'm like, mm. so something, something to do with fate. Inspired action is in a moment of clarity, you suddenly see an, you, you suddenly can think of something. A mark of fate is you twisting fate towards your appropriate action. Um, I'm just trying to think how there are two ways I could do this. Uh, again, feel free, uh, chat, to uh, to to give me your insight. Uh, my current thought is we could either make it that you get an extra use of your channel emotion which great fantastic another thing is i wonder if maybe you could use a mark of fate to double the duration of your channel emotion you could use a mark of fate to double the duration of your channel emotion to make it that it doesn't end until you either hit the end of the duration or fall unconscious or end it early. You don't have to meet any of the other requirements. Because both really do the same thing. You get an additional use of the thing. Just giving you a free reuse would mean that you get to choose when to use it. Uh, letting it last twice as long means you don't get as much control over when you use it. It's just useful for longer. But for both of those durations, you get the effect uh, because what I could easily do is both of them have the duration thing. Well, not both of them have the duration, but, but both of them have the not ending early unless thing. Doubling the duration would be useful. Um... But then what's to stop it just being automatically used every time the battle champion um, gets a mark of fate? It basically removes the other uses of mark of fate because you just want to use a mark of fate to... Um, you just automatically want to use a mark of fate to get... With emotional strike, you get extra attack with a better chance to crit, yes, but the other options are still useful. You're not, you might go, actually me and my bonded ally getting both to make an attack is the better option. Especially because this is maximum two attacks, extra attack for you would be three at high level. A Drano might have a ton of attacks. Um. I've just got to look at what can you spend a mark of fate on. Uh, 
Oh shit, uh, here we go, Mark. Yeah, so Mark of Fate you could basically use to get advantage on a trait test, invoke a concept, replenish an action point, uh, narrate a flashback to alter something. Um, Uh, let me, yeah, sorry, I need to jump back and forth a second because... I believe it's action time in chapter. Active time. Yep, yeah, so... Marks of Fate are a bit more powerful. So, I think... Because you've always got to think, you can get back one AP. Um, or invoke a concept. Or give advantage on a roll. Therefore, what if What if? What if we...
What level do we give you the ability to assistant? Uh, at the same time, that also removes the duration requirement. So. Right, hold on. Persistent. What's the exact word? It uh, only ends early. Oh, so they still have duration. Double duration is still useful, and the automatically quiet turn is useful. So it gets a little bit weaker at level 15, but not too much weaker at level 15, which I think is fine. Uh, I think that is sufficient to make it a useful option. But I don't think it will be automatic. Okay, so good news that's done. Um, as I said, this, this is what play testing will be for. We'll see if it's too powerful. But I don't think it is. Um, I think it just... Because what it basically means is if you know you're either going into two combats or you really need to extend it, you can go, okay, I know I need to do this. Use the mark of fate, increase it. Right. Next comes emotions. Oh, God, I've got to look at resistances. I worry about emotions first. So emotions. Do actually... Mm. Hmm. No, let's not play around with different emotions for different resistances. We could do that. Hmm. I think that was my original intent, actually. It was different emotions of different resistances. The problem is... Begin to... While technically it's not something I have to consider, it is something I have to consider is the fact that there is a very specific barbarian path <laughs> that can, because I've said, this thing is compatible with the barbarian paths. There's one barbarian path, which mm, I have to consider. I guess as long as I don't pick psychic damage, it's fine. Okay, what if we keep mark condition here, what if for defensive channel you get the regular mark of fate? So, thinking a second, just thinking, um, what if we make it that your regular mark of fate uh, 
No, sorry, we want to talk about Marks of Fate. We, we don't care about Marks of Fate right now. We care about what if you get the basic defensive channel. You get, you get your black as knight, but then maybe this bit also lets you have an extra resistance based on emotion. That could be cool. It's nothing uh, too astounding. Um, nothing too wild. It can keep it pretty simple because you're already getting a lot. You're getting a role play effect. You're getting. Well, to be fair, you get a restriction, a restriction, and then two effects. So we give you a resistance as well. So what's it give resistance to? Nope. So you get three nice things and two restrictions. Restrictions in quotation marks. Uh. Yeah, I think that's the best way to do it. Mm, we'll mm, we'll think about it. Oh, Part me goes. Oh, you could do some fun stuff, but the problem is I can't even think about what damage I would apply to some of these emotions. Like. Anger, you can go fire. Fear, you could go cold. Courage and hope would be radiant. Courage could be fire as well, to be fair. Hope could be radiant. Grief could be... Grief, despair could be necrotic. You could do it. Uh, or do we just want to apply it later? But then comes the question, is level 15 a bit late to be giving out resistances like candy? Was it... Mm, But it could be cool because we could do some fun with it if we apply a damage type associated trait associated damage type if you associate a damage type you then can do some fun stuff because you could go get resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, and what is associated with your chosen emotion. Then at level... Then at level... level whenever it is you get vent emotion we could make it that the extra weapon damage die can be chosen to be applied as your associated damage type or we just make it that you can replace your weapons damage type with your chosen associated weapon 
because that would be cool with vent emotion. You know, you just vent your emotions, you literally vent a load of damage of your emotions type. That would be cool. Okay, what about if we said at here we list an associated damage type, but we don't give you resistance. Basically, adept channeler is when your emotion gets to be added to where you get a load of effects. It, it's basically level five is when your emotions get to take over the primary role. Yes, that works. So now I have to add a line to each of these bloody things called. It's the one thing I really enjoy about these uh, streams, and well, I've been a bit sad that I haven't been able to do them in a while. Being able to talk to chat really does help get my brain in a kind of mode. Okay, we'll put you there, that's fine, as long as courage doesn't spill too far. Uh, we'll have to say, um, so I need to add a damage type to each of these. What do we say? Rage is fire. Despair is necrotic. Fear is cold. Grief is... I'd say courage is courage is radiant. Hope is radiant. Actually, if we go courage is fire.
hope is radiant. Peace is radiant. What we got? Joy, love, envy, joy, love, envy. What are the damage types? Uh, damage types. Acid, no. Fire, mm. poison. Psychic Thunder Lightning. Joy. Part of me wants to make joy fire. Which then leads us to love and en. Love and envy. What damage could we do for love and envy? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Part of me wants to put envy as poison. Maybe love as psychic? Maybe love is force. Love is a force. Because I think any emotion could be a sign of psychic. Um. Let's go with force and see what happens.
just briefly. Uh, I just want to double check my work just to make sure I'm not making a terrible mistake. Okay, let's let's run with that and let's see what comes of it. Let's see what happens, shall we? Yeah. Amusingly this does mean anyone who takes um who, who did want to use Circle of the Bear. Because someone will. Well, I guess they'll still feel the benefit because their weapons can then deal that, that, that damage type. So I guess there's still a benefit for the bear, bear channelers. Um... Yes, that'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how this develops. I'm quite happy with this change we've done. I, I think we've done well. Because basically today we've managed to resolve the big problem, which is your mark of fate and uh, inspired action. I think those are always the hardest bits to do. Um we've resolved the resistance thing we've come up with an idea how to use associated damage type interestingly and assigned one to each of them yeah we've done some good we have done some good so i'm just going to quit make a quick note to myself um Now what we're going to do is we are going to take a break, uh, about 5-10 minutes, and when we are back we will do some Harvest Stella. Okay, and uh, yeah, so see you all in a